Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we are going to be doing a union based SQL injection in the Hack the Box Jarvis box. We will first be assessing the vulnerability manually to then use SQL map to do it automatically and also get a shell on this box. Let's jump right into the video. So let's get a short look at what this machine looks like, what is running on it. And we notice that we have on port 80 a, a web server. And this web server seems to be running a hotel page. We see Stark Hotel and there are rooms, there is a dining and bar. Uh, we have sign in, we have utilities. And whilst looking at these pages, I noticed that in the room pages, we have this get parameter COD equals one. And when I change to rooms, that COD would e change to two or three, depending on the room type. Now, that got me thinking, is there maybe a database behind this? So if we give a number, is it gonna query a database to get these results? And if that is the case, can we do an SQL injection here? So how do I try an SQL injection? Well, I try sending a quote and see what happens. And in this case, we get a rather odd response back. We don't get any information on the page. So seemingly, this possibly might have been an SQL error, and, and that's why we don't get any output. It, it also could be that it, this isn't an SQL injection, but it might as well be. So, how do I attempt SQL injections? First, I break the server. I send a quote that is going to end up in an error in an SQL query. Then I try to fix it again and see if I can get output. So right now we broke it with a quote, so let's try to fix it by sending or one equals one, and then with MySQL comments. Sending that, we see, well, we still don't get anything back. And that's peculiar. Did our SQL injection not work? Well, let's take a step back and let's think about what the backend is doing here. So if this is performing an SQL query, it will probably look like select something from some database, and we don't know those, where the ID equals our input. We noticed that with our quote or one equals one, that did not work um, for some reason. Well, what if this ID is not a string? What if it's a number? Then if you would input the string, uh, the quote, obviously it would not terminate another quote, it, would it wouldn't work. But if this is an integer, then we can just pass in an integer or one equals one with the comments. And then when we do that, we see that we actually get a valid response back. So we entered an integer lead that definitely isn't a valid room. However, we still got a response back. So we have an SQL injection, which is great. How do we move on from this? Well, we want to see more data. We want to see what is in the database that we shouldn't normally be able to access. So let's try using the union approach here. So in SQL, the union keyword is going to link two select statements together. So you have one select statement and the other, and it's gonna just append those rows to each other. Now, however, there's one important thing here, and that is that the left and the right select statement need to select the same amount of, of columns. So if we do a select of uh, password and username on the left, then we need to have two columns on the right for it to work or else it will error out. So when doing a union select, we need to, uh, in an injection, we need to first figure out the amount of columns that we're using. So first I sent union select one. That ended up with an empty page. So I sent union select one comma two. So two columns that failed. I kept on doing that until I was at six columns and six columns still failed. However, when moving on to seven columns, we see that we suddenly get some information on the screen. And that is very interesting because that means that our SQL injection actually did work. And that also means that our select statement in the beginning has seven columns. So it's select column, 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 seven times from a database where ID, and that's where we inject it. Cool stuff. We can also see some of these numbers come back on the page. So we know uh, the second column uh, or the third column is for the price and stuff like that. Well, now let's see how we can actually get some extra data from this database. So for that, I'm, for example, going to want the names of all the databases in this, in this uh, database management system. So assuming this is MySQL, we can try to get the schema names from information schema.schemata. So we do that. And as you can see, I, I use the group concat here to ensure that I have all of the schema names just as one field to make it easier to get more information. And you can see that they get outputted on the screen, which is great. So we have our, uh, we can actually get 
any data from the database on our screen, which is amazing. So you can keep on doing this to get to dump the whole database through this way, but that is time consuming and nobody wants to go through that. So in the next part, we'll see how we can use SQL map to actually do all of that automatically and dump the whole database for us. In our terminal, we can execute SQL map. We'll supply a dash U option with the URL that we want to test and a dash P option with the parameter that we want to uh, test for SQL injection. Now we've already verified that there is an SQL injection, but let's see if SQL map can also find it on its own. So, okay, we let that run and we'll see that SQL map will first do a couple of tests on the endpoint, see if it's up, see if there's a firewall running, stuff like that. And then it will start trying and testing a bunch of, of techniques for getting SQL injection. After a while, it will return to us and say, hey, I found these types of SQL injections. And once you get that message, you're good to go, because now you can start using SQL map to get data from your database. And for this, we can, for example, supply the dash dash DBS option, and this will show us all the available databases. So in here, we also see the hotel database. Let's try to get stuff from that hotel database. So let's say dash capital D hotel and then dash dash tables to see all the tables in there. There's only one table room. Now we can get all of the columns in the room by saying dash T uh, room and then dash dash columns and we see all the columns. However, looking through all the data, we didn't spot anything interesting. There was no way for us to progress. There was no interesting information in there. However, that's not where your SQL injections stop because MySQL is, is huge. There's a lot of stuff that is possible and there's even a way to write files. And that's done with the into out file statement where we can supply an input that we want to write into the out file and then the file location of where we want to write. And that is very interesting because we also have a web server. So what if we could write a reverse shell or a web shell to the web server that we can then access through that web server. That will, that will mean that we could get, using a PHP web shell, remote code execution. Luckily, we don't have to try that manually because obviously we don't know the root of the web shell, so we'd have to try all of those. Uh, it would be possible manually, but we can actually have SQL map do that for us. And SQL map can do that for us with the dash dash OS dash shell option. Now what this will do, uh, it will first try to find a location where it can write files and, and can also access them. And you can see here that it found slash var slash dub dub dub. So it knows it, it can write there and it can actually then access those files. Well, now it, all it has to do is write a PHP web shell or, or a simple, uh, yeah, simple web shell or reverse shell. And then we have code execution and that works. And as you can see here, I ran the command ID, who am I, and a simple echo, and we got the results of those requests. So now we have code execution from an SQL injection in on this box. And that's gonna be it for this video. Um, so in this video, we showed how a simple union-based SQL injection can lead to remote code execution. Now this video is actually a part of my module of the XSS Reds uh, bug bounty course. So my module is on SQL injections. I also cover the theory behind them with some slides and a lot more videos that I don't show on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, check the link down below in the description and I hope to see you back for another video. Take care.